very thick counterattack. This disgusting Zarbon for three energy. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, and I'm here today with a little different kind of video for you guys. So, the Dragon Ball Super card game, made in Japan by Bandai, one of the most beautiful card games ever made. I would say the most beautiful card game ever made is extremely fun and easy to get into to collect, but it's a little bit difficult to get into playing. There's a lot of rules, there's a lot of sequencing, there's a lot of order of operations that you have to wrap your head around, and it can get mind-numbing and extremely difficult for new players to get into. So, I was hanging out with my buddy Noah, who I've known since preschool know if you're out there listening shout out to you for this awesome idea we were talking about the game i've showed it to him a couple times over the years and he never really fully got into it but he said if this game was just simpler it would be easier to wrap my head around to at least learn how to play and he was asking me if there's any cards that don't have all this crazy text on them and of course we have gill list cards so what I've done today is I've built two very simplified decks. I'm gonna go through the lists. They're super cheap to build. If you wanna build these and teach your friends how to play, I think this is a great way to teach the game. And I'm gonna teach in this video so you guys can see these decks, see how they play, and see how you'd be able to teach the game with these decks. With that being said, if this is your guys' first time here and you wanna see Dragon Ball Super Card Game content on a weekly basis, make sure to smush that subscription button down there. And if you're a returning member of the Joe Crew, I hope you can use this to learn yourself or if you wanna teach some friends how to play, this is such a fun game. And I want everybody to be able to play it and i think this is probably the best place to start so let's get into these decks i'm going to start with the simpler deck first this is sun go super saiyan god sun goku and when he awakens he becomes super saiyan god sun goku soul striker reborn this leader's great he's just a generic blue leader and basically what he does is when you attack with him he draws a card in his unawakened side he has two ways of awakening if you're at four life you can awaken or if you have a unison with a specified cost of three you can awaken and when you awaken you flip this card over you draw two cards which it says after awaken you draw two cards and on his awaken side when he attacks he draws a card and he turns two mono blue energy back so very very useful card um and at the end of the turn you can switch one of your mono blue unisons to active mode but that doesn't really do very much for the deck this is the leader and now i'm going to get into the list it's super basic you want to have four Nappas. Nappa's the man. He's a one energy blue skillless, just really easy. And he can be any one energy blue skillless. It doesn't have to be Nappa. I just like Nappa. I think this is a great card. Love the art. So I got four Nappas in here, four Super Saiyan Vegeta, two energy skillless. And these are all just skillless beat sticks. There's four of the Goku Super Saiyan Goku skillless. Got one Gohan and one Trunks, just because I don't like the way they look as much. Got four of the S, uh, four of the Sun Goku skillless, four Tapion skillless, because this card's absolutely gorgeous so i'm running four of these four ss goku skillless and three 30k bados skillless so this much of the deck is literally just skillless cards and these cards are great to teach with because you're just playing battle cards for energy and you can learn the attack sequence without having to get into too much about all the other interactions. To keep things simple, I used 10K draw one when you're at four or less super combos. So these are easy super combos to use. It teaches the super combo mechanic and you will have some ability to combo and draw. Kept it simple with four dimension magic because it allows the players to learn the process of negating and see how negates can resolve skills. This also has a sparking effect so they can learn about sparking and they can learn about counter attack. For the unison, I put Tapion in here. I think this is the best blue unison right now, and it's super cheap. It's a specified cost three, so it allows your leader to awaken. And he's a plus two rest and draw, so he gives you access to drawing cards. And since he's a plus two and he's a four energy, three energy unison he's basically going to come out with five markers on him and you're plusing a card and you lets you awaken and he's going to be able to give you access to spirit boost since he has a bunch of uh since he has a bunch of markers and whenever you use a spirit boost skill you can bounce something back to your opponent's hand that's bigger than their energy but that's not likely to come into play to teach the spirit boost mechanic i put in four of the Tap tapion calamity challengers these cards are super cheap it's a 20k double strike for one energy and it draws a card when it comes in you just need a unison on board to be able to play it for one energy it shows players how the double strike skill work it shows how you can play off of an activate main it explains limit one and it gives you a and it gives you interaction with your 
pretty innocent. Of course, since we're playing all the two drop skillless, I put two SS2 Gohan Astonishing Strikes. The only reason I'm running only two of these is because it becomes a little unfair. This card is just so, so good. But the player that's new is usually going to play the blue deck because blue, I think, teaches a lot more of the interactions faster. So I think it's a really good color to start with. And this card's really fun to play. And when people play this card, they're like, wait, this does what? That's insane. This seems broken. And it basically is. But it's really fun for a new player to play with a really strong card like this. So putting two of them in there so the reward is really great when you get to play it. One Gotenks. This card's cheap and it looks good. And I think this is a fun card for a new player. It has a bunch of different skills on it that you can explain, but just one of them I think is fine. And then one at all cost Vegeta. Just because if your life is really high and you want to get into super combo range, he's a good option to do it. He has a number of skills that they can learn from. And I think just having one of these in your deck makes it less overwhelming because if you see it, you know you're not going to charge it because he'll just charge your skill list. And he draws cards. There isn't much counterplay in this matchup. So he'll get in there and he has some utility. So that's the blue deck. And now we're going to get into the green deck. The green deck is a little bit more complicated. And if you are somebody teaching somebody else how to play this game, I recommend the more experienced player play the green deck because you're familiar with all the different triggers and how things work. And the blue deck's a little bit simpler. There's more interaction within the green deck. The blue deck is also a lot stronger than the green deck. So the new player is likely going to win the matchup, which is more exciting for a new player to win a matchup rather than a new player being bummed out about not being able to win a matchup. And it's more, it creates more enthusiasm about the game itself if they can play something a little bit stronger and it makes a challenge for the more skilled player to play something that has a little bit more interaction with itself but it's largely skillless based so i'm using videl as the leader videl is pretty useful she just draws a card when she swings and then you can draw cards when you have skillless in your battle area and then you can awaken when your life's at four or less you untap one draw one and she also has a sp spirit boost that allows you to play skillless from the drop area on her awaken side she draws a card um and she can gain power from your skill from your unison in this deck um she also gives skillless cards power when they're in battle so it ends up being a pretty good matchup and she has a similar spirit boost mechanic so the green versus blue matchup is pretty fun but let's get into the deck we got eight one drop to videls it's just four of these and four of these it's just a one drop 10k and the deck needs them so that's why there's more one drops in this deck eight two drop 20ks four of them are sun gohan and four of them are zing i'm not sure how to say this guy's name Z U anyway eight 20k two drops four 30k three drops the same their way same way there is in the other deck so this gives you uh all your skillless now this deck doesn't write, run quite as many skillless and it's a little more involved, but you still have a nice thick stack of skillless cards that you're going to be using. Same thing with the super combos to keep it simple. It's a 10k super combo that draws when you're a four or less. This is a good card to have a little bit of defense in this deck. This is Zarbon. He's a negate. He's a counterattack. So you can show your opponent how a counterattack works and you get a body on board and you get to uh, KO a card and make them discard. So when blue is drawing a lot, this guy has some value in that matchup. Four of these Videl blockers that allow you to draw when you have a unison in play. Very straightforward. Four of the new SPR Videl from the set. Uh, basically, she's you pay her, play her for one energy when you have a skillless in play, and you can kill one of your opponent's big cards, or you can kill one of your opponent's big cards, seven or less, or your opponent will have to discard two. Um, but she's pretty useful in this matchup because you're usually going to be just KOing skillless and getting a blocker on board to protect your unison or something like that. I'm playing one of these Majin Buu unadulterated destruction this is kind of like the boss monster of the deck uh if you see him turn five he could be somewhat devastating and help change the momentum of the game but oftentimes they can just play gohan and get rid of him and wipe him out so he's fun to play and it gives you one kind of boss monster in the deck playing four of the gohan spr this gohan unison this is great for the deck because it synergizes really well with the deck it finds your skill list from the deck he's often going to get ko'd but a lot of times what you can do if you keep one in hand you can just play him for like four energy on turn five and then play this goku for one energy spirit boost and get the goku skill off the spirit boost so i'm playing four of these and this is basically similar to like the tapion i don't think it's quite as strong but it gives you a it gives you something that compares to that in the same matchup to make it a little fair and balanced in terms of the negate two dormant potentials which you don't have to have two dormant potentials if you have them you can play them if not you don't really need them and then shocking death ball just three of those three and then three shocking death balls um this could just be four shocking death balls and then maybe like an evolution booster negate or something 
And then in the green deck, playing Hero Heroine's Lineage. Um, just a fun card to give a little bit more interaction. The blue deck is definitely stronger, so to have a secret rare that answers that. And then, you know, you can trade the secret rare between games. Your opponent can play the secret rare, and you can put, like, an overall option in this or something. So they're really straightforward decks, really simple. They use a lot of skill lists, and the, the, the idea behind the design of these decks is that it creates interaction between the players so that they can see how it is to play a battle card, attack with a battle card, resolve battles, stuff like that, because everything else in the game kind of fits around that. So once you understand that, it's easier to expand and learn more about the game. So after this, we're going to get into a match, and I'm going to show you how this matchup goes. So I hope you guys enjoy these deck profiles, and we will be right back with a match of Dragon Ball Super Card Game. All right, here we go. So the first thing that happens in the game is, the, is players take their leader card and put it in their leader area, which is generally in the top left corner. The next thing you do is both players will shuffle their decks. The way I like to shuffle is I like to make six stacks and then I will shuffle the cards in stacks to make sure that my decks are nicely randomized. And a lot of times when I'm shuffling my decks, I'll be doing it after a deck profile where all the cards are organized. So I wanna make sure that the cards are nicely, nicely randomized in stacks. So I'll go ahead and make six stacks. And while I'm doing this, your opponent would be doing this at the same time. And once your stacks are made, then you can take your cards and shuffle them up. That's called power shuffling. Once they've been power shuffled, then you can grab stacks of them and drop them into the side like this. This is another method of shuffling. And then there's also what's called a Yu-Gi-Oh shuffle from what I hear. I never played Yu-Gi-Oh, but you can also shuffle your cards like this. After you shuffle, your opponent gets the opportunity to cut your deck. So you offer your opponent to cut your deck and they will cut your deck or choose to tap and not cut. Once your deck is cut, your deck goes into your deck area. And once your deck is in your deck area, you will draw six cards that you look at and choose what to keep in your hand and what to send back to your deck. So in this deck, the unison is very important. So if you see a unison in your opening hand, you wanna keep the unison. You won't show these to your opponent, but for the sake of learning, I'm gonna lay them out here and play open hand. This is also a nice card and there's only four in the deck, so we'll keep this. And the super combos are great because in this deck, we're not drawing a ton, so we may not see another super combo. So we wanna keep one of those. These three cards, there's lots of copies of them in the deck. So I'm happy to send these back to the deck. So I'll send back three, which is my mulligan, reshuffle, and then I'll draw three off the top of my deck after that. After you shuffle, you give your opponent a chance to cut your deck. They will cut your deck or choose to tap. And then you draw three more cards to draw your hand back to six. After your hand has all six cards in them, you will set your life in your life area. So you draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards for your life points. And then your life, you lay out in your life area, which is below your leader. Personally, I like to lay out my life as four and four, so I can see when I'm at four life, because when I'm at four life, I'll get to awaken, and my super combos will be live. So I put my four life right there. My opponent will have done the same thing by now. The next thing we do is we'll roll some dice, two dice, and whoever gets, we'll either do a high roll or a low roll, and whoever wins the dice roll has to go first. So we'll say two dice, high roll. Uh, we'll say Videl rolls a five and Soul Striker rolls a 10. So Soul Striker will be going first. We'll be doing the same thing on this side. We'll put our leader in our leader area and then shuffle our deck. And my opponent will have the opportunity to cut my deck. At which point I will draw six cards into my hand. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And out of these six cards, we'll likely just keep the super combo and the negate, which are these two. And we'll send everything back in hopes that we find a unison because the unison is what's gonna allow us to awaken. So we'll shuffle here and then give our opponent the opportunity to cut our deck or they can tap. And then we'll draw four cards to draw our hand back to six and we'll set eight cards in our life area. And like I did on the other side, we'll do four cards and four cards for our life. Take a quick look at our opening hand. And we know since we won the dice roll that we're gonna be going first. 
So there's our unison, which is great to see. We know we have a lot of two energy skillless cards in our deck. So the charge is obvious in this point. Now, since since Soul Striker won the dice roll, Soul Striker is going to be going first, which means um, they, they are the turn player, since they are the player that is going first. The turn player does not draw during their charge phase, and they do not attack on the very first turn. So we're not going to be drawing a card, but the first part of a turn is the charge phase. Turns are made up of two parts, charge phase and main phase. So now that we're in our charge phase, we can choose a card from our hand and put it in our energy area. We know we have lots of Super Saiyan Sun Gokus and two energy skillless cards in our deck, so we'll use this card in our energy. When a card goes in your energy, it goes into your energy area, which is here, and it goes inverted. This is an active energy since it's pointed upright. When an energy or a card is exhausted, it turns sideways, which is referred to as tapped. And at the beginning of your next turn, all your cards will untap, unless they other otherwise specify. So, since it's our first turn, we can't attack, but we can at least use our energy to play this Nappa. Nappa is a great looking card and he's hilarious, so we're gonna pay one energy, and the cost of the card is right here. You can tell you need one blue energy because there's one blue dot. For this, since it's a three energy card, the specified cost is two blue, so you'd only need two blue in order to play this. So we'll pay that energy and we'll put Nappa into our battle area. Since it is our first turn, we cannot attack this turn, so we will pass turn to the opposing. Since Videl is not going first, Videl gets to draw at the beginning of their, char at her their charge phase. So we will draw for our turn and add a card to our hand, then choose a card from our hand and put it in our energy area. Now, we are not going to be able to play a three energy card until turn three, and there are three more of these in our deck. So I'm okay with putting this in my energy area. So I'm going to turn, put this card in my energy area in active mode, and I am going to use my leader to attack. Now, when I attack, I am choosing to attack my opponent's leader card, and I declare that I am attacking my leader to their leader. Leaders can be targeted when they're in active mode. Battle cards can only be targeted when they're in rest mode. So I am unable to attack Nappa, but I can attack my opponent's leader card. When I choose to attack, my opponent has the opportunity to negate the attack. Now, in my opponent's hand, we know, since we saw last time, that there is a Dimension Magic. Dimension Magic is a counterattack, and they could use this counterattack. However, there is no energy available to use the counterattack. So our opponent will be saying no negates and we will now have the opportunity to resolve our auto. This card has an auto that says, when this card attacks, draw a card. So as soon as this card attacked, the auto went into the pending. After they say no negates or no counters, we get to resolve our auto, which is we get to draw one card to our hand. And now this card will go into our hand. After we resolve our auto, we go into combo. At this point, any card from my hand that has combo cost, which is shown right here, could be added to the value of this attack to increase the power of the attack. However, I'm not particularly concerned with increasing the power of the attack, so I am going to say no combos, and the attack will not go through since Videl is 5,000. There is no need to push this attack through. So our opponent won't be taking any damage because we're 5,000 going at 10,000. In Dragon Ball Super Card Game, the defender has to be higher to block an attack. Now, instead of playing our unison, we're gonna pay one energy and play a skillless Videl. Videl is good to have in our battle area because she'll give us some use later on in the game. So we're gonna just keep her in our battle area and not attack with her this turn. At this point, since we're not doing anything else, we'll pass turn to our opponent. Now this is going to be turn two. So at the beginning of the turn, everything that's exhausted turns back to active mode. We draw a card at the beginning of our charge phase and then choose a card in our hand and place it in our energy area. Again, we have lots of two energy skillless in our deck. So this is a perfectly fine card to put in our energy area. When I put cards in my energy area, I like to stack them so I can see the colors right there. So I know what color card it is. Now that we've used our put a card in our energy, we can begin our main phase. In our main phase, we can attack and play cards in whatever order we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attack Videl with my leader for 10,000. I can't attack the skillless Videl because the skillless Videl is in active mode. So I can target the leader and attack the leader. At this point, my opponent will have the opportunity to negate. They don't have any energy open and no negates in hand, so they would say no negates or no counters. And my auto would resolve. Goku's auto is I can either turn one blue energy back to active mode or I can draw a card. 
Since both my energy are in active mode, there's no point in me turning an energy back. So I'm gonna use that skill to draw a card and add another card to my hand, which is great because that card's really useful. Now it's 10,000 to 10,000. At this point, I would have the opportunity to combo. I am not gonna combo because I don't wanna waste cards from my hand. And I believe that my opponent will take the attack because I think my opponent is okay with being at four life because that's when they'll be able to awaken and use their super combos. And sure enough, since I am my opponent, I was right and I will take that hit into my hand. So one life point gets dealt into my hand and that card goes into my hand. That battle is over. Now I can look in my hand and see if there's any cards that I want to play. I don't have any cards that I want to play in my hand, but I can attack with Nappa. So I will choose to attack my opponent's leader with Nappa. Nappa is 10,000 attacking 10,000. My opponent has an opportunity to negate. They don't have any negates in hand, so they say no negates and they don't have any energy to negate. I have the opportunity to combo. I don't want to waste cards in my hand because I only have one, two, three, four, five cards in hand and I know my opponent has more but this is gonna hit another card into the hand when it deals with damage. And sure enough, I was right about taking that hit. I'm going to take that hit into my hand because I'm fine with going to four life and get another life point dealt into my hand. At this point, my opponent would pass turn and now it's my turn. So for the beginning of my charge phase, I draw a card, turn everything back to active mode, choose a card from my hand and place it in my energy area. And this time I'm gonna choose one of these guys since I have two of them. I'm perfectly fine with putting one in my energy area. So I'll place this in my energy area in active mode. And now my turn begins. My leader can attack battle cards and leader cards. I'm not so concerned with attacking my opponent's leader card, but I do wanna make sure that I attack their battle cards. Now, I also have a unison in my hand, which will give me the opportunity to play a unison card. So. In this moment, I'm going to play my unison first by paying one energy and playing a unison card. When I play the unison, I pay one energy for it and it will come out with one marker on it. Unisons can activate main once per turn. So this card says, auto once per turn. When you remove a marker from this card using a spirit boost skill, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of two or less and KO it, which will become very useful when my opponent has a two energy battle card. But right now, I don't care that much about Nappa. The activate main on this unison is add up to one green skillless battle card with an energy cost of one from your deck to your hand, then shuffle your deck. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that plus one skill, which means that I can choose one, the dice or markers on it, and tick it from one to two. When I do that, I'm allowed to look through my deck, search my deck for a one cost skillless, which I just saw one, but I wanna take a peek through my deck to see if my secret rare is in here. And sure enough, it is. So I know my secret rare is in my deck, so hopefully I'll draw it from my deck. And I also know that I have one more skillless in, or one more unison in here, so that means that two unisons are in my life. So I will get another unison from my life and I'll add this card to my hand. I will go ahead and shuffle my deck, and after I shuffle my deck, I give my opponent the opportunity to cut my deck. For the sake of time, I'm not going to be cutting decks, I'm just going to be shuffling and putting the decks down in my, de in, my, in my deck area. Now I'm going to go ahead and attack my opponent's leader. Now my opponent has the opportunity to negate. At this point they don't want to because they're okay with getting more cards in hand, since I have a lot more cards in my hand. When they say no negates, I have the opportunity to combo. Once I have the opportunity to combo, I am going to use a skillless card in a combo. But before that, I'm going to resolve my auto. So my auto is when this card attacks, I get to draw a card. Now my leader is at 5,000. And one of the cool things about the leader is when you combo with a skillless, you get to draw a card. So this is going to give 5,000 combo power to my leader and make it go from 5,000 to 10,000. Now, my opponent would have to be over 10,000 to block since they're unawakened to that 10,000 power, which means that I will be taking this hit into my hand and a card gets added to my hand from my life. And now I'm at seven. Life. At this point, I still have one energy open. So I want to use my energy to play defensively because this is a defensive card. So I'm going to wait for my defensive opportunity to use that card, but I am going to attack Nappa. So I'm going to attack Nappa with my skill is for 10,000 to 10,000. We're gonna go through the same process where my opponent has the opportunity to negate, then I will combo, then they will combo, but it's not worth either of us using the cards in our hands. So 10,000 will beat 10,000. I'll say no combos to block Nappa, and Nappa will get KO'd and put into the drop area. At this point, my opponent passes and my turn begins. 
So for the beginning of my turn, I will draw a card. Then I will choose a card in my hand and put it in my energy area. Since I have two Vados, I'm okay with putting Vados in my energy area. Now I'm at three energy and I have a three energy specified cost unison in my hand, which allows me to awaken. So the very first thing that I wanna do after my charge phase is pay three energy to play Tapion, the hero revived. Since I'm paying three energy for Tapion, Tapion will come out with three markers on him. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing for my plus minus on my unison. I'm gonna plus two and switch my unison to rest mode, which allows me to draw a card. Since I have a unison specified cost of three in play, I can awaken. When I awaken, I get to draw two cards. Once I'm awakened, when I attack, I can turn back two energy and draw a card with my leader. So with my leader, I'm going to attack my opponent's leader, turn two energy back, and draw a card. If we were playing for real competitiveness, it would be a lot more likely that I want to attack their unison. But for the sake of learning and for learning the game, I'm going to go ahead and target the leader with this attack. When my opponent attacks, I have the opportunity to play this card because this card says auto limit one for one green energy. If you have a green skillless battle card in play, when your opponent attacks a leader card, play this card from your hand. If your leader card is green or a heroine card, when this card is played from your hand, your opponent may choose two cards in their hand and discard them. If they don't, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with a set energy cost of seven or less and KO it. So I'm gonna pay one energy for this Videl. Now she doesn't have any targets since they don't have any battle cards, so they won't have to discard or kill a card, but it does give me a blocker in play since she does have the blocker skill, which will allow me to protect my unison if I had to. However, we're still in battle. It's 15,000 to 5,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that hit because neither of us are gonna combo. Now, since I have two energy open and a skill is in play, and I drew this card last turn, this, turn can this card can use the spirit boost mechanic. Spirit boost costs one energy on this card, which you can see with the blue dot after spirit boost one. Since I have a blue unison card with 15,000 power or more, and I have three or more energy, I can play this card for one energy by removing one marker from my unison. That's what spirit boost means. So I can pay one energy. I can play Tapion for one energy. And when he plays, he says, when this card is played, draw a card. I will have to remove one marker from my unison. And now I have a 20,000 double strike card in play, which I will attack my opponent's leader. And if this attack were to go through, it will knock two markers rather than one. So when I attack my opponent's leader or unison, and in this case, it would really be smart to attack the unison. So I'll say I'm gonna attack the unison. I will say no negates here because I do not have negates. However, I do not want my unison to die and I do not want my leader to take the hit if they were attacking my leader. So in either event, I would use my blocker now and choose to block that attack. Now it's 20,000 to 5,000. I'm not gonna combo to save my blocker and they're not gonna combo to kill my blocker, but my blocker will die and it will get KO'd and go to the drop area. At this point, my opponent would pass and my, my turn will start. So I draw a card for my turn and ooh, look what we got here. Now let's turn this energy back. We're gonna, everything will return to active mode. I'm gonna choose one card from our hand and put it in our energy area. And this time we're gonna put another one of these guys in our energy area. We'll use our unison skill to plus one and look through our deck for a one energy skillless. And there it is, so we'll add that to our hand. And since it specifies, we have to show it to our opponent, shuffle our deck and then let them cut. But for these games, we are not doing cuts just to speed things up. This gets added to my hand. And now I'm going to, I'm going to attack my opponent's leader. Now, when I attack my opponent's leader, I get to, they'll say no negates, so they're not countering. I get to draw a card, and then during combo, I can choose a skillless card from my hand, put it in my combo area, and when I put this skillless card in my combo area, I can add up to one life to my hand and draw a card. And when I do that, and when I do that, I'll be at 10,000, so I won't go over, and this card will go to my drop area. I should have used energy first to, to awaken, which would allow me to draw a card and get an energy back, but I forgot to do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pay the price of not doing that. But fortunately, I have this card for defense, so I'm gonna save this on defense. At this point, I'm gonna pass turn to my opponent.
But now that it's our turn, everything is going to turn back to active mode at the beginning of our charge phase. We'll draw one card from our deck and then choose a card in our hand and place it in our energy area. We'll go ahead and use this card in our energy area. Now, first thing that we want to do is use our unison skills plus two, switch our unison to rest mode and draw a card. Next, we're going to use our energy to play a card. So we'll go ahead and play this two energy Tapion card since it looks gorgeous. Now, since we've used two energy, we can use our leader to turn these two energy back by attacking. When we attack, we get to draw a card and turn two energy back. Now, being the smart player that Green is, Green knows that this is going to be problematic for them, so they should keep their energy open, since there's four energy open and it's blue skillless, which means that Gohan is probably coming. If they're a smart player, they'll know that. I'm also seeing both sides, so I know what's going on. But now that we've turned two energy back and drew a card for our auto, now we go into battle and we're attacking our opponent for 15,000. At this point, we're gonna bait our opponent's attack and go to three life so that they think that we're gonna die. So we'll take this hit since we're at three life and leave our three energy open. And that battle is over. We see an opportunity to go in for the win. And the way that we're gonna do that is by playing Gohan. So what Gohan says is activate main. Since it is our main phase, if your leader is a blue sand and your opponent has three or more energy and you choose one of your blue skillless battle cards with an energy cost of two, Play this card from your hand. If you played this card, place the chosen card in your energy. So we're gonna pay four energy, choose this card from our hand, choose this card in our, in our battle area and put it in our energy area and put this card from our hand into our battle area. Now Gohan has deflect, which means he can't be affected by counterplay skills. So if our opponent had a counterplay skill, the counterplay would not work on Gohan. But Gohan also has triple strike. And since our opponent is at three life, we think that we're gonna kill them because this will hit for three life, not just for one, since it has triple strike. Gohan's activate main is once per turn, you can place one mono blue battle card from your energy area in your drop area, switch this card to active mode and choose all of your opponent's battle cards and place them at the bottom of their owner's deck in any order. So Gohan is out in play now, and now we're gonna attack with Gohan to try and kill our opponent's last three life. Since we have three energy now, we're gonna use this very thick counter attack which says negate the attack and play this card. When this card is played during your opponent's turn, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, KO it, then choose one card in your opponent's hand, discard it. So we're gonna play this disgusting Zarbon for three energy and we're gonna KO Gohan instead of letting him become a problem. So we have to pay three energy for Zarbon and then we choose Gohan and KO Gohan. Gohan goes to the drop area and then we get to choose one card from our opponent's hand. Our opponent will shuffle their hand and show it to us, and we're gonna pull a card out from it. And we got their negate. That's great. Our opponent is still in their turn. So at this point, we're in a little bit of trouble since we just invested all that energy, but fortunately we have a lot of life, so I'm not too worried about it. Now we're gonna attack the leader with our 20,000 double strike. We don't have any negates here, but we're gonna need to add some pressure next turn. So the trick we're gonna pull here is we say no negates, and they're not gonna combo since we're only at 5,000. But the way we're gonna get around this is we're gonna awaken, turn back one energy, and draw a card. We're just gonna go ahead and steal that Tapion. So we're gonna pay one energy, play Heroine's Lineage, and choose to take this card from their battle area and gain control of it. That's what this activate battle says. During our combo step, we can activate battle. If your opponent has three or more energy, choose one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of seven or less and gain control of it. Now this will go into our drop area and we now have control of Tapion. At this point, our opponent doesn't have much left to do, so they'll pass turn to us. Here we get our energy back, draw a card, and then we're gonna choose a card from our hand and place it in our energy area. So this time, we'll put Gohan in our energy area. Now, for things first, everything's gonna stand back up and we're gonna use our plus one skill on our unison to go and find a skillless battle card from our deck. So we'll go through our deck, find a skillless battle card and add it to our hand and shuffle our deck.
Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna attack our opponent's leader with Videl. When we attack with Videl, our opponent has the opportunity to negate. They're gonna say no negates, and we are gonna combo a skillless battle card. Draw for the attack and draw for the combo of the skillless battle card. This becomes 19,000 at 15,000. Now our opponent has so much life, it doesn't really matter to take hits, so they'll just take this card into their hand. And that battle is over. Now we can attack for 20,000 to put our opponent at five life. At this point, our opponent is gonna do the same thing and they're just gonna take that hit. So this card will go from their life into their hand after battle. Now we're gonna try and double strike them to get some more damage off them. So we'll take this card and attack for 20,000 double strike. Our opponent has the opportunity to negate now. Since this is a double strike, it's a good idea to negate. So our opponent will pay one energy and negate with dimension magic. And when they negate with dimension magic, they turn two energy back to active mode. So they net one energy back and that attack is over. So we have four energy in active mode and we have a unison in play. So let's try and get in there for some attack. We're gonna play one energy for Sun Goku, Spirit Bomb Unleashed. Activate main, limit one. If you have three or more energy and a green unison card in play, play this card from your hand. If you do, choose up to one of your opponent's unison cards and remove a marker from it. So we'll play this card and we'll take one marker off of our opponent's unison. Now, we can activate main. Once per turn, once per turn, Spirit Boost X, green unison card. This card gets 5,000 power for the turn. For each marker you remove from your unison, with this skill, if you remove two or more markers, this card gains double strike for the turn. So we'll play Goku and we'll minus four off of our unison and put four mark, four or five K boosts on Goku and give him double strike. Now we'll attack our opponent for 35,000 double strike. Our opponent doesn't have any negates in hand, so they say no negates. At this point, we have the opportunity to combo but we're pretty sure that our opponent is gonna take this because once their opponent takes this, it'll be they'll be in range to use their super combo. And sure enough, we were right. They took two, two hits into their hand and now they're at three life and we're tied for th three life to three life. Now let's take a look and see if there's anything else that we wanna play in here. I think it's a good idea to play another unison. So now we'll pay one energy for another great Sandman who will come out with one marker on him. When he comes out with one marker, we can activate the plus two to look through our deck for another one energy skillless card. And there it is, we're gonna add that to our hand. It's important to reveal the card that you're taking so your opponent can see which card you're adding to your hand to ensure that you're not cheating. And with that, we'll play a blocker for one energy. When we play this blocker, we get to draw a card. Now that we've used up most of our energy, we'll keep an energy open. We'll play one more blocker to have another blocker on board to draw another card. Now we've used our energy and we don't have any cards in our hand that require energy for defense anyway, so that's fine and we will pass turn to our opponent. Now for our turn, everything is gonna turn back to active mode. We're gonna draw one card and we're gonna choose one card from our hand and put it in our energy area. Since we have so many unisons and we're not gonna play many more unisons, we can use a unison for our energy. This is our draw pile over here. These are the cards that have been used in combos or that are used as extra cards. And our deck area is over here. So first things first, let's draw some cards. We'll take our unison to six markers and switch it to rest mode and draw a card. Seven markers. Now, what do we have in our hand to play? This card looks like it's pretty good, so let's read it. Deflect double strike barrier. Once per turn, if your opponent activates a counter skill during a battle with this card, choose all of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and return them to the zoner's hands. Then switch up to two of your mono blue energy to active mode. So this card's pretty good because we can almost ensure that we'll deal two damage with it. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll, we'll play Gotenks, Battling Forces of Evil. When we play him, we have to pay four energy to play him. Now that he's out, we're gonna go ahead and attack with our leader to get energy back. When we attack, our opponent has the opportunity to negate. They have no negates, so we get to turn two energy back 
and we get to draw a card. Now that we've turned two energy back and drawn a card, our opponent has the opportunity to negate. Since we don't have any negates in hand, we'll say no negates. However, we will block the attack. So we'll redirect the attack to this Videl since it has the skill blocker on it. Now the battle is between this card and the leader. Neither of us are going to combo and this card will get KO'd and put in our drop area. Now that we're done with that battle, we want to attack with our next card. So we're going to play Tapion, Unison of Pol Tapion, Calamity Challenger for one energy by spirit boosting off of our Unison. So we remove a marker from our Unison and we play Tapion. When Tapion comes into play, we're allowed to draw a card. Now we're going to attack with Tapion first because it's likely that our opponent will use their blocker on Tapion. Sure enough, we were right. So we use our second blocker on Tapion. Blocker gets KO'd from that battle. And now we can attack with our Gotenks. So we're going to attack our opponent's leader with Gotenks. Our, go our opponent has the opportunity to negate. They say no negates, and now we go into combo. We really want this attack to go through. So we're going to put a super combo on it. Super combos allow you to add 10,000 combo power and draw a card. And we're going to put another super combo on it just to really push extra damage. So we put 10,000 on it and we draw a card. Now this becomes 40,000 since it's a 20,000 base plus 10,000 plus 10,000. In order to block, our opponent will have to go to 45,000. Over here on the green side of things, we say what the heck, we think we're gonna win next turn, so we'll take that hit, no problem, and go down to one life, living life on the ledge. So we see our opponent has one life left, and it's likely that there's a chance that we'll lose next turn if we don't win. So the question here is do we push for game or do we wait until next turn? And I think the answer is that we push for game. So we're gonna go ahead and play Vados for three energy. Now Vados is 30,000 attack. We know our opponent doesn't have any energy left to negate. So we're gonna attack with Vados for 30,000. Our opponent says no negates, and now we dump our hand. So we go to 35, 40, 45, 50, 60, draw for the super combo, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. 90,000 single strike at our opponent's leader. First we think to ourselves, maybe we made a mistake, but then we must try. So first we're gonna combo from our board. Since this is a battle card in active mode, we can use it to combo. So here's 15,000 and this gains an extra six or extra four from our leader skill and we draw a card. So that is 19, 29, 39, 49 super combo draw, 59 super combo draw, 69, 79, 89, and 90. Four. So let's recount this. This skill list puts us at 15,000 plus four from the leader skill gives us 19,000. So that's 19,000, 29,000, 39,000, 49,000, 54,000, 64,000, 74,000, 84,000, 94,000. Just to be sure with how much we attacked for, Let's recount our attack, and we have 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, 80,000, 90,000. So our opponent blocked that attack. At this point, our opponent doesn't have anything left to attack with, so they pass turn to us. So we'll untap two energy, draw a card for our turn. Choose a card from our hand and put it in our energy area. Since we won't be using a counter, we can put this counter in our energy area. And then we can choose this great Saiyaman in our, in our energy. Since we have Son Goku in play already, 
we can pay one, two, three, four, five energy for Great Sandman. So he comes out with five markers. He'll, we'll play this fresh one with five markers, and then we can activate main on Goku to remove the five markers from Great Sandman, give Goku 25,000 extra power, and attack our opponent's leader, 40,000 double strike. And we are not gonna combo. Since we only have one card left in hand, we can't do anything about that, and we'll take that attack. Now it's one life to one life, and we are gonna attack with everything we've got with Videl. So we attack our opponent's leader, and for the attack, draw one card. When we draw one card, we can choose one card in our hand, put it in our combo area. This will gain an extra 4,000 for the leader skill, and we draw for that. And now we'll combo the rest of our hand. So we're at 19, 29, 39, 49, and 54. 54,000 at our opponent's leader. At this point, we only have 10,000. So we'll combo 25,000. We can't get out of the attack. Deal our last life. Shake our opponent's hand, GG. And say, thanks for playing. That was really fun. If I didn't know what was in each hand the entire time, that game probably would have gone differently. But this is a great way to learn. It's a great way to teach your friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. There's definitely a lot going on in this game, but making decks out of skillless cards and playing with them is a great way to learn and to teach your friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this game with these beautiful cards. I am Joku DMD. This has been a Dragon Ball Super Card Game How to Play and How to Teach tutorial. Here is a gorgeous looking secret rare that you can look at here for the end of this video. And if I were to give you guys a dental tooth tip, it would be... I don't know anything about how to clean Dragon Ball players' teeth. It seems like they only have one big tooth on the top and one big tooth on the bottom. So I don't really know how any of that anatomy would work, but I imagine they'd be pretty easy to clean since they don't have spaces in between. I'm Joku DMD, and I'll see you guys next time. The whole system was too large and I just needed a chance to get away from myself. I needed a chance to escape. It's not about me. It's not about uh, me. Look, I told you you're not supposed to be calling me out here. What? Look, I don't even have a damn or a signal. I am standing right next to you and I can't hear a word I'm saying. Yeah, I made it back to my branch. I got a little work to do over here. Just shut up and give me a second. The branch fell in shambles.